Hey, what is up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Today, I'm doing something a little different than I normally do. Usually, I do longer project tutorials, but today, I'm kind of starting a small series on how to write functions. And the reason I'm doing this is because I've been reevaluating why I write functions the way I do in certain circumstances, and I thought it might be helpful just to list the different ways you can write functions and when you might want to use one over the other. Today, we're going to focus on the most basic way to write a function, which is just a function declaration. So let's start there. Now, the way you write a function is you just say function, then you give it some kind of name. In fact, if I come in here, you can see it's already prompting me there to add that. So you can have a name here and then some uh, parameters and then your function statement. So I could call this something like say hi. All right, and we could pass in a uh, name here like first name. This is a parameter. And then we could come here and say return. And then let's add back ticks here. So we can add that E6 template string here and say first name. So this is what we passed in. This is the parameter that uh, we passed in. And we can say hi. I think that's what we said. All right. And maybe for some pizzazz, let's add an exclamation point. Okay, so I can come in here to my open console and I can say uh, say hi. And I can add the name like Joe. All right, and it says hi, Joe. Now you can also use like a, uh, an array and pass in like a, a variable. That way you don't have to manually type it in, but this is the most basic way to write a function. You have some function and you have a name to the function. You have something you pass in, which you don't have to have, and then you return something out of that function. Now you don't actually have to include the function name, and that comes to our second way to write a function, a function expression. Function expression is something that you just add to a variable. Now maybe you've heard that in JavaScript, functions are first class citizens. And that means you can add them to variables or point variables to them. So I could come in here and say const and we could name this variable square me. Now you could come in here and just say uh, square me equals two. All right, that's fine. That's uh, this variable is pointing to this value of two. But functions can also uh, be values. So I can come in here and say function and then give it a name and basically write it like that and then reference that function by this constant variable. So for instance, this square me function would take in something like x and then we'd come down here and say uh, return x equals or x times x. All right, that would square whatever we pass into it. Now, this is an anonymous function. It doesn't have a name to it. And we're going to talk a little bit more about anonymous functions in the future. It just has function, and then it has some parameter that you're passing in here. But browsers now will take this constant variable name and essentially apply it to this function so that it's not just anonymous wherever you uh, type it in. It used to be when that didn't happen, you'd get weird errors here where it would just say error in anonymous function, which is totally unhelpful. Now it'll actually say it's inside this variable uh, where this variable is pointing and it'll call it actually the square me function. So the way you'd run that is you'd come in here, let me make sure I save that and uh, we remove that. So I could say square me and I could add like two. All right, and so it's going to take two, and you see again, it's basically inferring this name from the variable name. And so the function, even though it's anonymous technically, it's actually getting that name from the constant. Now you can actually name uh, or provide a name for the function in here. So if I came in here and called this like uh, square or something like that, you can do that. But you might think, okay, well then I could come over here, and now that I have a name for it, you could say square, and then I could pass in two but that will do nothing, all right? Because this name is actually scoped to the variable itself. So why would you name a, a function expression like this? Well, it's because if you wanna use it as like a recursive function. So if you wanna reference the function itself inside the function, you need a name to be able to reference it. And uh, I won't show you an example here just to keep this video short, but uh, like let's say if you said, uh, if uh, x is equal to or less than one, then return one, otherwise, uh, run the function square me times x or something like that. So you could actually, or not square me, square times x. All right, so you could actually run a recursive function in there where it would reference itself. That's when you would name it inside of a function expression. Now the other helpful thing to know with function expressions, which is why I say that I'm trying to move to just writing function declarations as the default, is that function expressions are not hoisted. Now, if you're like, what does that even mean, all right? Uh, normally, files are read from top to bottom. JavaScript does, however, take some elements, and one of those would be functions themselves, and it adds, brings them up all the way to the top. Let's duplicate this. 
Okay, and then let's remove this and say function square. Okay, so that's set. And then we'll remove that name. It, it's not required. Okay, so let's come up here and I'll, I'll show you what I mean, maybe instead of telling you what I mean. So we say console.log and then we log uh, square uh, and we add like two. Okay, now what's going to happen if I save this? You see that I'm console logging before the function has actually uh, been read by the JavaScript file. If I hit save, you'll notice that I get four automatically. Well, let's remove this so you're not confused. All right, so this is actually coming in as soon as I load the page. And the reason is because JavaScript, even though this is technically would be read afterwards, because it realizes it's, realizes it's a function, it hoists it to the top of the document. And that way you can reference functions that you've written way further down before they're even declared. So that's called hoisting that happens with regular function declarations. Now that doesn't happen with function expressions. So if I come in here and say square me and hit save, I should get an error because it can't access square me before it's been initialized. So that's one important thing to recognize, one important thing to know, which is one more reason to use function declarations as kind of the default. So the first two ways to write a function, the first two I'm showing you today, are first of all a function declaration, and then secondly, let's get rid of all this so it's clear. <laughs> secondly, a function expression. All right, usually I'm going to reach for this function declaration. There are some times, especially within other items, where I might write a function expression, uh, like within a uh, variable, I might write a function inside of that that I just want to be scoped to that. It's quicker to reference it with this constant variable name. And uh, so that's when I use a function expression. It's usually inside another variable when I want to write a quick function that will only ever be used inside of that variable. So those are the first two ways to write a function we're going to look at. Next, we will look at arrow functions in the next video. All right, thanks so much for watching, and happy coding.